Sometimes building materials aren't actually what they seem. And so today we're going to be testing block work. So guys, today we're going to be testing block work blockwork core filled and hebel brick. We've created an enclosure around the brickwork which is airtight. We're going to be applying some pressure to one side and also releasing some smoke to see how it potentially permeates through the material. Joseph, where do we see these materials being used? Oh, blockwork is the most versatile material that we commonly see in the we so-called back of house area of buildings. Usually those area, the architects, the design team doesn't care how um, spectacular it looks. All the requirements are on the functional performance requirement. Block work is very versatile, is um, fire resist, non-combustible, strong, quick and easy to install. It got many, many benefits. However, on today's test, we are going to show you one thing that the block work doesn't do too well, which is air tightness. Yep. Among the area that we commonly use block work in a building, the key areas that require air tightness are any smoke wall, any pressurized risers or shafts, any plenums for mechanical system to supply and return, or even the car park wall where you may have contaminants from one side, you don't want it to go to the other side. Even plant room walls, right? Or plant room walls or, or, or any, any walls forming part of the airtight building envelope. Rooms even with hazardous materials. Oh, that's it? even more yeah. important. Now, how about stairwell pressurization? Oh, that's one of the riser or shaft that yeah. require pressurization yeah. that I mentioned. It could affect, right? Yep, Commission. and also areas like toilet exhaust Mm -hmm. um, shafts, mm -hmm. kitchen exhaust shaft, they all should be airtight. All right, so we've got these rigs here. Which one are we going to be testing first? Well, let's look at the simple blocks. All right, let's do it. And see how well it does. Okay, so Joseph, we're only putting 50 pascals into this box and it's oozing out like a waterfall. Oh yeah, and numerically it leaks 12 meter cube of air per hour per meter square of this type of block, yep. which is pretty high. There's a lot of reports and uh, tests that have been done overseas as well, hasn't there? Oh yeah, some of the worst concrete blocks that they test were up to 80 meter cube per hour per meter square. But I mean, those may be different type of material mm. completely. They may be a lot more air bubble mm. in the block work to make it lighter. So it's not an apple to apple comparison, but what we use here is the most common concrete block you can get from the hardware store. You know which one I'm talking about. Yes. Now also we've paid quite careful attention to the mortar quite continuous with this install but on job sites it's not usually the case especially at the top of walls behind well, false ceilings. At, as I said in the introduction most of the time this type of block work are used in the so-called back of house area mm. where the lock doesn't matter and a lot of the time the tray may be in a bit of rush and not paying as much attention as what they do in the nice finishing brick work, not yep. pointing nicely mm. in the mortar. So this is already, I can say, the best you can get. So the, the leakage rate of this or the permeability rate of this product? The permeability roughly? rate of this sample is roughly. roughly 12 meter cube per hour per meter square. It's leaking through this sample and is exposed to roughly 32 to 33 kilometer per hour wind. So we've just tested the non-core field. Yep. We're going to move on to the core field, yep. right? But after all that, and after the Hebel, we're also going to maybe try some solutions to yep. put an air barrier on these. We'll try to look at some more common solution and some more professional solution. All right, awesome. Let's go into the core field.
So Joseph, we got this one to 50 pascals as well. Core field, you'd think this would be considerably better. Yep, it's leaking at nine meter cube per hour per meter square, which is a 25% improvement. But when you look at the surface area ratio, mm. you would hope it can reduce by 75% mm. mm, instead of 25. So. Yeah, it tells you there is a network of channels for air to go from one side to the other. Yeah, inside the brick. Yep. And we now we can we can tell the tray on site. Mm -hmm. Core feel is not good enough. No, it's not. It's not. Yep. But we've always told them that it wasn't. Yep. Mm -hmm. But now we can show them yeah. how it looks. Absolutely. So we've got two potential solutions for an air barrier retrofit. There's a standard undercoat paint or a liquid membrane. Okay. And today we are going to test using a common undercoat primer and see how many coats we need to put on to get it airtight yep. versus a more professional tailor-made solution, a liquid membrane. While we are putting the coating on, let's check the Hebo. That awesome. So Joseph, what actually is Hebo? Hebo is an aerated concrete, which in the process of making these blocks, the manufacturer pump in a lot of tiny air bubble. Mm. So it creates a more lightweight product with a lot of air bubbles inside. It works very similar to um, foam board. The air bubble inside also provide a lot of insulating properties. Mm. So it's a really good product. Mm. Usually they are not as structurally strong, mm. but because of their insulative performance, mm. they are very commonly used on external wall to act as both a um, cladding as well as um, insulation material. Let's test it, see what it looks like. Cool. Joseph, we've just tested this Hebel brick and I'm actually quite shocked. Yeah, it is surprisingly good. For this 100 mil thick block, mm. We recorded a leakage rate of only one meter cube per hour per meter square. But I mean, it could have been because of our enclosure or our connection. It, 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 it uh, we couldn't see anything. Well, it could, it could be because um, the way how they made this particular type of Hebo, mm. the bubble is so fine that it filters out the smoke. That's the, that could be the reason why we didn't see mm. any smoke coming out. Mm. No, it's pretty amazing. Yep, and we try to use soapy water to see if it bubbles up. Didn't but because of the nature of the material, it just soaks up the water yeah, and not yeah. forming a film of yeah. um, soapy water in front of it. Okay, so on to our next. So we're gonna we've got some painted block work. Yep. That we'll check now and and the also liquid membrane. the liquid membrane. Yep. So let's move on to that, and then we'll finish this up. So Joseph, I've just smoked this up. We've got one coat of paint. Let's see what this guy does with one coat. We've just painted these products. Overall, a pretty good result after uh, some sort of a coating, right? Yep, they works pretty well. Practically, we cut the leakage down from 12 to 3.1 meter cube per hour per meter square at 50 on this a, block. It is a very small sample though. Yep. So it's hard to get accurate figures. Of course. Yeah. But it just shows you the um, proportion mm. that it can trim it down to. Roughly it can cut down around 75%. Also, the painting that we gave these was quite liberal, well, quite generous. Uh, yep, on, on the primer, size. The way that we did, we, we were very mm. generous mm. in applying the coating. Mm. And on the liquid membrane product, mm. it actually should be spray on, but because we are a bit lazy and It'll just so try to convenient. Apples and apples testing the yep. application method as well, uh, I think. Not really, because mm. if the product is designed to That's be true. sprayed on, it should That's be true. sprayed on. That's true. But because it's a, such a small sample, if we use a spray gun, we'll get mess everywhere. So the, the actual membrane, what, what, what did that get in the end? Well, after one coat of the membrane mm. applied by roller, mm. it comes down to 2.7 meter cube per hour per meter square. Mm. That's fantastic. So, I mean, there's a solution for utilizing these products, right? Yep, for sure. 
So the lesson that we learnt from today's exercise is that we need coating or other method. And one of the other very common methods used in Europe that we haven't talked about is render it. Ah, oh, yeah. Yep, if you apply a layer of render, it will become airtight. But then you've got to have the continuation of that render onto the roof. Uh, to the other Correct. air barrier. Whatever is going to be And air also, one of the weakness of render is you need to be very careful about the expansion joint. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this is useful for you and don't forget to watch all of our other videos on our channel. <laughs> See you next time.